There is a famous story that goes something like this. Once upon a time there was a donkey who was standing between a pile of hay and a bucket of water. Now obviously this donkey wanted to both drink the water and eat the hay. But he just couldn't decide. So he kept standing there confused, unable to make a decision. And then he died of both thirst and hunger. Indecision killed the donkey. Now of course a donkey cannot see the future, but if he could then he would realize that he can first eat the hay and then drink the water. But you know what's funny? All of us spend our entire lives being this donkey. We are too scared to make a decision and stick to it. So in a way we suffer from the same fate as this donkey. This is because we are all thinking very short term. Here's what we need to do instead. We have to remember that our lives are very long. If we assume that you are 25 years old right now, then you can reasonably expect to live till 85 years of age. That means you have another 60 years left in front of you. 60 years to try everything you want. So what's the hurry then? We've all done this before at some level. Let's say you want to read a book, but you also have an exam tomorrow. Most of the times, it doesn't even matter how much you want to read the book, you're probably going to study for the exam that you have the next day. And then after the exam, you can come back home and read the book. But if you cannot decide between reading the book and studying for the exam, then you're not going to be able to enjoy the book and you will also fail your exam. So we need to apply this kind of thinking at a higher level for our lives. If you're trying to decide whether you should start a business or get a job, just make a decision, do that and then do the other thing later. Start a business, work on it for a few years and if it doesn't work out, then get a job. But if you stay in the middle, confused and unable to make a decision, then you are not going to be successful at anything. Now you know the importance of making a decision, I'll now tell you a few models that you can use to make sure that your decisions are the best that they can be. But before I tell you that, I need you to understand one thing that I've already said before in an earlier video. Successful people don't make the right decisions, they make their decisions right. If you want to be successful then you need to understand this very closely. No matter what decision you end up making, you need to have the kind of mindset where you can make it right. Even if you mess up completely, you can use that decision as a learning experience so you avoid making the same mistake in the future. If you want to learn more about this mindset, you can watch a video I made about this by clicking on the link in the description. Now I'm going to tell you the decision making models from the decision book. Now you might be thinking that, oh I don't need to use models, I can just make good decisions for myself. But remember that when you're making Making decisions on your own. It is in an unstructured way and you might miss a lot of things that you can easily take care of if you were using these models. These models will simplify things for you because they do not embrace all the details, only the ones that are relevant. They only focus on what's useful and they are a very good way for organizing your thoughts so that you can come to a very balanced and pragmatic solution. So the first model is the Eisenhower matrix. US President Dwight Eisenhower said that the most urgent decisions are rarely the most important ones. Always remember that. Just because finishing your homework today might be the most urgent decision, it's not the most important one in the large scope of your life. So what you need to do is to make the Eisenhower matrix, also known as the urgent versus important matrix. Divide the tasks into these four categories. Not urgent, not important, not urgent but important, urgent but not important and urgent and important. Do the urgent and important tasks immediately. Do the not important and not urgent tasks later. Decide when you will do the important but not urgent tasks and get someone else to do the not important but urgent work. I'd also like to point out something, that you need to make a habit of doing the important but not urgent tasks every single day, otherwise you'll end up delaying them till the last minute and you will end up doing a bad job at them. For example, if you need to study for an exam that you have in the next month, that is an important but not urgent task. So you might as well start studying right now when you have the time and the peace of mind so you don't have to cram the night before and end up doing poorly on the exam. The next method of coming up with a solution to a problem is called the SWOT analysis. This stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. So let's say you're trying to decide if you should change your jobs. Use the SWOT analysis. What are your strengths? Are you a good networker? Do you have any sources? Are you competent enough to get another job? What are your weaknesses? Are you a bad teammate? Are you going to get negative references from your boss? Are you a bad negotiator for a new salary? What are the opportunities? Is it a higher pay, a better job satisfaction, better quality of life for your family? 
And finally, what are the threats? Can you lose your life savings? Will you have trouble getting a car loan? Will you disrupt your children's education by moving to a new city? Now, it is important that you think about these four factors very carefully and then come up with a well thought out solution. This method will not tell you what to do, but it will organize your thoughts and make sure that you have all the information in your mind before you make an important decision, either for your business or for your personal life. Next is the consequences model. This model is pretty simple. At the start of any project or activity, you need to be more bold with your decision because it is at that time that they will have the most consequences. If you just started making a new software, then you need to quickly decide the higher level stuff and communicate that to your teammates. Obsessing over tiny details and not making a decision will only set you back. Always remember, not making a decision is a decision in of itself. So it is very important to be a little more courageous in the beginning and make decisions quickly so that you can save precious time. The crossroads model. Sometimes in our lives, we come at a crossroads where we are unable to decide where we want to go next. When you are at that point in your life, ask yourself these five questions. Where have you come from? Think about your childhood, your home, your education, everything that made you into who you are today. What is really important to you? What are the three things that matter the most to you? The things that you don't want to live without? Which people are important to you? Whose opinions do you value the most? Who are the people in your inner circle? What is hindering you? What's stopping you from really going after what you want in life? And what are you afraid of? Write down the people, circumstances or things that take away from your power from taking action. Now look at all the things that you've written so far. Does that tell the story of your life? Do you feel that everything is there? If there is something missing, then write down a few more words. Now I want you to look at six roads that are in front of you. The road that beckons you, what you've always wanted to try. The dream road, what you have wanted to try in your wildest dreams. The sensible road, the road that makes the most sense to you and the people who are around you. The road not traveled, the road you've never considered before. The road that you've already been down and the last road is the road back where you just came from. Taking any of these roads is completely your decision. There is no right or wrong, but you have to decide the kind of person that you want to be and then go down whichever road you think is the best for you. The road that you think will take your life to where you've always wanted it to be. The flow model. This is the model for making a decision about the things that will make you happy. US psychologist by the name of Mihai Sek Mihai, I'm sure I'm pronouncing his name wrong, found that people were happy when they were in a state of flow. Have you ever been so engrossed with something, maybe while taking a photo or while writing a song, that you completely lost a sense of time? That is called the state of flow. Flow occurs when we are either intensely focused on an activity of our own choosing, it is neither under challenging nor over challenging and it has a clear objective and immediate feedback. So if you're trying to decide what career you want to choose, then think about what puts you in a state of flow, which activity satisfies all these five conditions for you. And the last mental model I leave you with for making decisions is the Pareto Principle. The Pareto Principle basically states that 80% of the results come from doing 20% of the work. This means that the rest 80% of the work only gives 20% of the results. So you need to focus on the 20% of the most important tasks because that way you'll get closer to your goal. I'll give you an example using my channel. While making a video, I have to do about 10 things before I click publish. Read a book and do the research, write a script, record the narration, edit the narration and add music, animate the video, sing the narration and the video, export, write a description, create a thumbnail and write the title. But if you know anything about YouTube, you will know that most of the views come from these last two things, the thumbnail and the title. So this is the 20% where I need to focus on if I want to grow my channel and increase the views. Now here's another important aspect of this. Just because I need to focus on this 20% doesn't mean that I can ignore everything else. This is a common misconception about the Pareto Principle. I still need to write a good script, record a good narration, etc. Because otherwise you will feel cheated while watching my videos and you'll stop watching and you'll unsubscribe. So while I do need to focus more on the 20%, the other 80% is still important if I want to get results. A lot of people use the Pareto principle as an excuse to get lazy. It's not a cure-all for your problems. It'll just help you identify the things that you need to focus on so you can increase your results and productivity. 
That's all for this video. I hope you learned something new in this video and if you did, then please click the like button and subscribe for more. You can get this book from the description below. Thanks for watching.